Bingo, okay. And so I'm going to turn the camera around so that you can see this wonderful group that we have here. Oops, what happened? Um, I see them. I know, hang on, I've got to get to, there we go, hang on. Gosh, I love technology. Okay, there we go. And we'll put this up into speaker view and take it, take it away. Okay, and this is an edu educational technology class that has to do with uh, elementary school teachers? Yes, uh, we, do we have, we have a couple secondary, don't we? Okay, we have one secondary, everybody else is elementary. These are predominantly sophomores, but we also have uh, a couple freshmen, we have juniors and seniors. Okay. And, uh, and they are going to change the world when they get out into there because we're, we're developing leaders. Great. Excellent. Excelente. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. I'm a Spanish teacher um, and I'm also an educational consultant. And like uh, your professor said, I work with the United Nations to help spread the SDGs, otherwise known as the Global Goals or the Sustainable Development Goals in Education. And I work with hundreds and hundreds of teachers from around the world uh, who are also doing this. Um, I was commissioned to be on a task force by um, Ambassador Decima Williams from Grenada to uh, really look at how we can get the global goals into um, everyone's mind all around the world and especially through education, through all the teachers to reach all these students. And I didn't know if you guys knew about this fact, but one fifth of the world right now is below the age of 14. So if you think about that, you guys are influencing or about to influence in a couple years, part of that giant group of people. So big job ahead of you, right? <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen so I can show you a little bit about a couple of the things that I've done or to give you guys some ideas. So um, I know that I see that you guys are looking up here and I know that he's recording it, but um, in case you have paper or just want to jot down a couple ideas, I can give you a bunch of places where you can start. Okay. 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 So I'm going to share my screen. Is that good? Yeah, uh, well, hang on a sec. It's not coming through. I'll, I'll get it. Um, I think I have a button that says share screen. Can I just click on that? Pre pre well, no, you, you, you press the button that says share screen. Okay. And then, that, that's down at the bottom. Yeah, and then here we go. There we go. Now we can see you. Okay. And you're up in the upper right-hand corner for us. Okay. So are you seeing my screen? We're seeing your screen. There okay. we go. Now, now we see something from Buncee and now yes. we see Spanish K-5. Okay, great. Okay, so um, uh, Professor Seitz might have told you guys about um, the world's largest lesson. If you just Google world's largest lesson, which I'll do right here, that's always my number one place to start. And world's largest lesson, um, is a company that's funded by um, a couple different groups, but they work uh, in collaboration with the UN and UNICEF, and they're actually funded by Hasbro. Um, and a lot of people are involved in this, but it's very, very education friendly. And it has my absolute favorite resources to help teach kids about the global goals. So on this home page, you can see that they have a couple campaigns. Um, the one for 2018 is this one called 2018 Content. It's all about action, trying to get the kids to think about what they can do to take action for the goals. And it has some lesson plans and ideas. But as you scroll down, you can see here um, the goals. So I know a couple of you are second grade teachers and you guys were gonna be talking about clean energy. So if I were you, I would go right here to goal number seven which is affordable and clean energy and click on it and see the resources that they have for you. So what they have here are different lesson plans and it tells you what age they are and how long it'll take you. Um, here's something that you can download and print. 
you can see that some of them are for younger audiences, 8 to 11, older audiences, 11 to 14. Here are some infographics you could use. Here's a cartoon, a comic strip. And um, in the past, you know, even like as an assignment, once my students learned about a certain goal or the goals, as an assignment, I asked them to create an infographic. You know, you could do it where <clears throat> it's just words like this, or they could find a relevant picture and then find a quote or a fact and figure and put it on. But that's a way for them to start. So before they know about affordable and clean energy, if you're going to talk about the goals, um, what you can do is you can go first to just introduce the goals. And they have some awesome videos um, where here it says introduce the global goals. And my favorite one is part two. So there's a world's largest lesson animation part one and this one's part two. Part two is narrated by Emma Watson who you guys might remember is the actress from Harry Potter and she was in Beauty and the Beast. Um, it's a five minute video and it talks about all the cool things that some actual kid inventors around the world are doing to uh, make a difference with the goals. But you can see here that there's a bunch of different things that you can use. There are guides for you all to learn about them. There's lesson plans here. There's this comic strip that was um, also made, um, I think through UNESCO. So there's all sorts of, you know, different things for you to use. So again, these are just resources, resources, resources. Are you guys good on all that? Okay, so what I do when I personally teach is <coughs> I'll go here and I'll kind of look at a couple of the lesson plans and then I kind of know my demographic and the type of student I want or the student that I have in the class and I kind of tailor it to them. And sometimes I don't use just one lesson plan. I kind of merge a bunch of them together. So when I do that, then I kind of think about, um, you know, what applications that we have that are tech based that would help me go ahead and teach the goals. So one of my favorite is this one called Buncee and it's B-U-N-C-E-E. -E. And they do have a free version. And this is one of my absolute favorites that I like to use. Um, for everything. But what this is right here, this is called a Buncee board. And a Buncee is a presentation. So this Buncee board is a collection of all my presentations. And for example, this one has to do with all the ones that I do when I teach Spanish K through five this year. So um, for example, here's one that I just made. Um, if any of you are interested in joining or seeing, or you can follow along on me, um, Buncee has teamed up with Skype and they have called uh, the Buncee Buddies Skype project that's happening. And it's happening right now because it's asking students to get together with another partner classroom and talk about what is their plan for peace. So it's a way to get kids to kind of problem solve and to kind of think about, you know, what they can do to make a difference if it's you know inventing something or campaigning for something or just even taking a look at their community and to reach out and share it with another classroom so my we have been paired up with a group from argentina so what i've been doing is um i used buncy um, to go ahead and kind of create the the graphic for this um, or it's like a, you know, it's kind of like a PowerPoint, but it's a lot more, it's a lot cooler. So um, here I went and I put in, in English and in Spanish, because I'm a Spanish teacher, um, the, you know, the different symbols. I've got here the goals. Um, I made an infographic. So here, um, talking about peace. So I found this, inf uh, this information. At least one-fifth of humanity lives in countries experiencing significant violence, political conflict, and insecurity. So that would be kind of a starting point about why um, the discussion of peace is important. Um, again, going back to world's largest lesson, looking at, I went to goal 16, and I found that we had this as the comic for this one. So I brought this up and put it on here so I could share it with the students. And it talks about how, what, these are some steps we can do to make a difference. So end all forms of violence, combat crime and corruption, and you can talk about it with students. Then I went online and then I looked for videos. And one thing, a hint for you guys, when you're teaching, 
if you ever want to show um, a YouTube video, sometimes if you just go to YouTube, it brings up all the other YouTube videos and some of them might not be appropriate. And plus, sometimes it's distracting because the kids can see other videos that you've been on recently or no matter what, it's distracting. So what I do is when I have a YouTube video to show, I plug it here into my Buncee. And that way, the only thing you see is that YouTube video. And when it finishes, it just stops. So that's a plus to using um, Buncee as an area to show YouTube. That would be um, like, that would be like embedding, embedding it. Embedding it, PowerPoint. yes, yes. Okay, so again, thinking of kids' safety and kids' distractions. Um, I was kind of thinking, okay, one of the things I'm gonna have the kids all research a little bit is about famous peacemakers. So in Buncee, I plugged in Malala and I plugged in Martin Luther King and they had these stickers, so I just went and placed them in. And then um, if I plugged in Mahatma Gandhi, it took me to the web and I grabbed this picture and put it in right there. So, and then you can go ahead and you can put in links that become live links, but you can see, um, this is kid friendly and all these backgrounds were already made. They have um, backgrounds and I put in peace and it brought up 20 different backgrounds and I just chose different ones. So while the students and I are working, I literally pull this up on my screen um, on the whiteboard and like right here, we didn't get to the slide yet, but I'm saying list vocabulary list. So as we're talking about peace, I'm going to go ahead and write down some words that are going to be relevant. And then here, um, during the peace project, they wanted us to introduce ourselves in our classroom to the other teachers that are participating in the project. So I made our slide here on Buncee. So I have, you know, we're a Notre Dame Ace Academy. Our school is St. Patrick's. I wrote down a couple goals about our school, kind of have, you know, little things here that this is me, the students, and just, you know, a way to share. So, um, Another thing I wanted to show you, but it might take me a minute. Um, have you guys ever worked with Adobe Spark? No. So if you write down Adobe Spark, that one is another item that you can use that when I teach a lesson, I like to go on there and basically it looks like a website, but it's just one simple web page and it brings up a small box and it just asks you, um, would you like to add a link? Would you like to add a picture? Would you like to add text? Would you like to add something else? And as I create lesson plans, I put my whole lesson plan on there and that guides my presentation also. So I was going to show you an example of that could, if I have time, but if not, friend, yes. Friend, um, could you tell us more about the resources? In other words, I have students and they, and they, they go to the largest lesson where there's, you know, Mm -hmm. For each one of them, there might be a dozen, maybe two dozen lesson plans or something. But if I'm trying to figure out, if I'm, I'm working with uh, nine-year-olds and I want to I select the one on, uh, on education, okay. what kind of projects, I, is there some place where they give me a, a list of ideas as to what kind of projects a fourth grader could, could do to help support education around the world? Okay, so then if you're interested in global projects at our website that we have that's called Teach SDGs, we're in the process right now of um, have students go ahead and do things, but it's not totally there yet. There's a couple things there. And the world's largest lesson, they are also working on, they're looking for 10 good projects, but it hasn't come up yet unless um okay well i'm 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 i miss i misspoke I, we're, they're not necessarily <laughs> looking at global collaboration they're simply saying what can i do in my in my you know i'm a nine-year-old i'm i'm here in in iowa uh -huh. and i want to do a project or i want to do something or the teacher says i want my kids to do something so they understand you know the need for good education or okay. the need for clean water in other words is there, are there other resources beyond the largest lesson that you suggest when people want to find topics that they can use? Yes, um, Microsoft Education. So if you, um, I don't know if you students have joined that yet, and if you have, you do, you can join as a, they have an area where you join as an educator, and as long as you have a Microsoft account, you can do it, it's for free. And then you could look up SDGs, you could look up SDGs projects, or if you have the topic like water, you could plug that in and do a search and see if there's any projects there. 
Oh boy, we hit we hit the gold mine on that one, didn't we, gang? Okay, that one. But even here, like, look for example on this one about the all about action. I was doing this with my students. Everyone can be a goalkeeper, and this is just a general talk about um, how to introduce the goals and what it means to um, how do our personal characteristics lend themselves to how we can all make a difference. So you can have discussions with your students like here. It's like, what's special about you that makes you unique? Uh, what skills or characteristics do you already have that you could develop further to become a goalkeeper? What kind of person do you want to be when you are older? These are all things that you can do on pencil and paper or with tech with students and then have them. And then here, for example, um, this is an example of a young woman from Malawi who she walked around and talked to parents about not marrying off their kids before the age of 18. It used to be very common that at age 13, the girls were married off in child marriage and then stopped schooling. So I give, you know, examples about, okay, that's what she did. What can we do? So they have here a list of words for the goalkeeper app. So you, you can look at these with your students and think, okay, pick three of these words that define you Maybe they can write a little paragraph about it. And then you can make a goalkeeper portrait. So they can draw themselves and then put um, those three words on top. Or I'm gonna show you an example of how I did it on Canva in Spanish. Or you could do it through the app that they have. Um, but even just asking the kids to just, you know, make the pledge what are you going to do to what which one of your personal characteristics is going to make you an awesome goalkeeper so they can just draw something like that um hold on one second let me go here and let me show you what i'm talking about sometimes it just has to do a lot with creativity which i know if you guys are all teachers you're you're creative um and it's kind of i like what i do is i see all the resources and all the tech items from everywhere and then I go and create some things myself. So this is the one I just created recently. So this is an Adobe Spark. And you're seeing it from the editing page. So I took the goals and then I gave it a title. And then I found the goals in Spanish and then I put a blurb underneath. And as I was teaching the class, I just used this, you know, first step let's talk about um what do students already know about the topic what can we do to achieve the goals and then here definitions let's define sustainability development goal and pledge and then we had an activity where the students got to think about what is the definition of these three words and just write some words up on you know chart paper or how do these words correlate with the goals or correlate with our lives um, and then we talked about the power of youth and i embedded like I did before the the videos here and then I introduced them to a friend of mine from Tanzania who is 18 years old who is um, teaching other students about the goals um, I have a couple more resources here then I have the one about the girl from Malawi and then here is another video about taking action so I showed that to the students and then just like that lesson that you I kind of introduced before, this is talking about identifying characteristics that make you unique, that would help give you the potential to be a good goalkeeper. And then um, if you push this button here, it creates the image. You just upload your face and then pick three words and see, and then it makes this, and then you can tweet it out or you can do something with it. But it, with your students, you could have them do something like that, or they could draw one and then they put in um, the words, but it's something very physical that you can look at that kind of identifies what you're doing. And here's the one I made on Canva, which is another cool free application where you can make graphics. So I did the same thing. I found a frame that had four pictures. I found my words. I put them in Spanish. I put them in colors and then I uploaded this. So um, but normally a spark so it looks like a website but it's just simply a web page so this is another tech piece um, where you can have you know upload different things that students do i like to also pull uh print out the the different goals and take pictures with the students so um if you guys have ever played kahoot in one of your classes you can create a kahoot about the goals i have one here 
Um, and I can give you the link to this so you guys can see this and look through it. For the parts that are in Spanish, you can just use a translation device and it'll put it in English for you. Mm -hmm. But this is just an example of what I do. Do you guys have any questions for me? Questions? <laughs> so, um, why, why, why didn't somebody? Well, uh, why don't we share some of the uh, topics and, and projects you're thinking of doing? Uh, the energy game, the uh, second grade group. Can you tell us what you're thinking of doing at this point? Now, we have to point out that this is the very beginning, and these are just their ideas right now. Okay, C can you share something like that? Yeah. So we're doing. The can you hear her? Um, barely. She'd have to speak a little louder. Oh, we're doing the seventh goal with the clean and affordable energy, and so we each have different subject areas. So like mine is science, and we're supposed to compare, one of the goals is to compare two different things, and so comparing like which one is better in our area, the state, and why, and then going about the cost aspect, mm -hmm. and then like the history of how they came about um, with that, and then for like English standards and stuff like writing comparison, like how they can implement it into their life, like they live on a farm or something like that. So it would be all the different standards. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you all have ever seen Padlet and you can only have a couple free Padlets, but this is a place where exactly like you're saying that they're all coming up with ideas on what they can do around a goal. You can create one and then have all the students um, just go ahead and um, I'm gonna pull up one so you can see it. And they can, add their ideas. They look like little post-its. Um, this needs to load. Do you see that? I've been using Padlet before. Excuse okay, me? I'm using it later on in one of my, in my lectures. Okay, so this is a Padlet, but I was just thinking because you just said, was the project on um, the pollution in the ocean? Is that the one that they're doing? Or it was clean energy? energy. And they're looking at clean forms of energy. Okay, so this is one way that students can, you know, they can just write an idea, they can upload a picture, they can create something somewhere else and then upload the link. Um, right here is an example talking about the pollution in the oceans. Um, one of my students, she used a, something called ChatterPix. Um, ChatterPix is an app and you can take a picture of something and then you cut out a little mouth and then you record your voice. So for students, they really like it. So I asked the student to think about if you were talking about pollution in the ocean, make a case for why people should help you, but your character is the fish, you're the person in the ocean. And so the student in his or her voice talked about how not to pollute and steps to be better the environment, but it's really cute when I hit play because you see the fish talking, but it's the actual student's voice. And that's sometimes that's less unnerving for kids not to have themselves on video. Um, you can also do something on Flipgrid. Flipgrid is when um, you put on a question and everybody can add a video response of a minute to a minute and a half, and it's all located on one place. And Flipgrid is free through Microsoft. So and I have one, one, other, one other group wants to ask a question and then we need to get, get back into our, oh, I'm so glad you joined us. Um, and I'll give you all the links. So you guys, even though this went really fast, I'm going to give your professor the links and he'll share it with you. And um, you guys can go ahead and look through everything and get ideas. I think that's the best way yeah, to that's what we need. Okay, one last question. So our question. Real loud. Okay, our question is, um, what kind of difference could we make to the world? <laughs> what kind of difference? It's up to you. Um, well, it, it depends because I mean, and think about your your students and hopefully you're impacting and you're inspiring your students to do something. But um, this guy right here, he happens to be my son. And I met a girl who was from Kenya, who in her science project for IB in high school, she developed a water purification unit so that people in her area didn't have to walk two hours to get clean water so that they could go to the borehole that was only 10 or 15 minutes away and then put the water through the purifier. And so since the women and children were spending less time walking for water, they could spend more time um, doing things that they could help them make money or go to school. And then my son, what he did is he wanted to make a difference for it. So he researched and he created a website and, a, and an event and he actually had a little um, dodgeball tournament and he raised $900.
and he sent that to the girl in Kenya to go buy more water purification units so that more families could have this to help them out. Whoa. So that's just one example. That like, and that's, and that's small. And like, uh -huh. that's what they said. You can, you can, I guess that would be campaign because he campaigned for goal number six and then he took it upon himself to, um, you know, educate himself, educate others, ask for donations, and then he sent it to her. But you don't have to ask for donations to make a difference. If any of you guys are interested in this too, I work with a group down in the Dominican Republic who have absolutely, absolutely nothing. And they only go to school three hours a day. And literacy is a big problem because they're cane um, or rice field plantation. So they need materials for literacy to help them learn how to read. And if any of you guys have this where you're creating materials to teach kids how to read in English or Spanish, if you send it to me, I can send it to them. And then that's less materials that those teachers have to create. Fantastic. So that's another way you could help. Oh, this is fantastic, Fran. Let's give her a big hand, everybody. <laughs> this is, I, I mean, the, the, that whole idea where you've got, uh, imagine being in a place where you don't have the water, you have to walk hours to get water, and you can, and, and what if you had a class and you were able to get money, you, you, you raise $900 to help them buy more water purification systems? That's, that's awesome. Sometimes okay. it's just education. I'm working with a group of teachers right now that we're coming, we're creating a, it's called an SDGs book collection. So that like, let's say, like you guys said, one of you guys was talking about goal 14 and pollutions and oceans or someone talking about clean energy. We're identifying books with other librarians that are good books for kids to research an issue. And they might be fiction, nonfiction, historical um, documentaries so that, um, you know, teachers like you can easily find good resources and use them with your kids. So Correct. for example, on goal six, the kids read A Long Walk to Water by, I think her name was Sue Monk Kid. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And um, we'll see you again at 3.15 or. Yeah. It'd be 3.15 your time. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank bye you. all. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay.